Good morning, brethren, sisters. Church of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. And read along with me at the scriptures we're going to be looking at today. Read along with me, word for word, verse by verse, okay? Keep an eye on me, because sometimes I make mistakes. Be a Berean, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Go ahead and get the scriptures. I'm just looking at uh, Proverbs 16 here. Verse 2. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. But the Lord with the lowercase as spirits. Hmm. Verse 9. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. Hmm. Hmm. And look at verse 25. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Hmm. And the very last verse, the lot is cast into the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. Hmm. Yesterday was the 15th, obviously today is the 16th, but we know that. Um, you know what, brethren? Sometimes... We just have to be neighbors. <laughs> I laugh because, because it's like, you know, some people, some of you, uh, some of us, we have people that we wish weren't our neighbors. <laughs> All right? Right? But, you know, occasionally there are moments in our lives as saints where we have to be neighbors where we have to be neighbors. And um, what does that mean? Okay? What does that mean? Yeah, you know, like, for example, you don't let the Jehovah's Witnesses into your house. Okay? You don't let the morons, Mormons, into your houses. But, you know, um, yesterday, our one neighbor beside us, um, a woman who's going through breast cancer and stuff like that, she has the hairdo that, like I used to wear, okay? Um, she came over yesterday, and uh, she was here for quite a few, quite a few hours actually, and just, just talked, you know. And we got, you know, gave the chance to witness and give a testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ and that kind of stuff. But it, it was like she knew enough to come over to our house, our little apartment here, in a place where she would hear truth. And people would hear her. Because she obviously needed to talk. She's kind of lonely, you know. She lives with her son over there, you know. Nice people. But, um, and it was like, you know, I was telling my wife. Because she was, you know, was talking to me. It's like, you know, wow, she was here for quite a while. And I'm like, you know, sometimes one of the best things we can do as saints is just to listen to people. Just to be an ear. You know, there's that saying, the ministry of presence. You know, in the book of Job, again, great, perfect example. And I'm in the book of Job in my devotional readings, uh, again, of course. But the book of Job, Job in a fell swoop, one, two, three, four, had everything almost taken away from him of the tangibles. And, uh, and then, you know, Satan is allowed to... Uh, touch his bone and his flesh, but not to kill him. And Job is sitting in ashes, you know, uh, scraping himself with a pot shard, basically scraping off pustules and stuff like that, and sat in ashes. And his wife is like, uh, still retainest thou thine integrity? Curse God and die, you know. you got to remember about Job's wife. Those are her kids too. Those twain are one flesh, Okay. So what he was going through, she went through as well, just maybe not as severe. But those, those children came from betwixt her feet. Okay? All right? Just, just saying that. Okay? But Job's three friends started out so well with that ministry of presence. 
Okay? Just being there. You know? Just being there. Having another person there, spirit, soul, and body there with you in a time of need. Hence the thing of loneliness that uh, overtakes sometimes a lot of the saints, even though we're never alone. But sometimes we are required, brethren, to be a neighbor. To be a neighbor. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. Verses 16 and 17, just to start. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Don't lie about your neighbor. Thou shalt not covet. Now this is the one that Rome, because Rome takes out the commandment about idols. So they make the, the tenth commandment two. They break it into pieces. And they remove the uh, commandment about idols. Because Catholicism is all about idol worship. Catholicism is all about idol worship. Okay? Anyway. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Nor his manservant. Nor his maidservant. Nor his ox. Nor his ass. Nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Having food and rain, and be, let us be there with content. Be content with the things that you have. Don't covet what your neighbor has, okay? Because remember, they ain't taking them with them when they go, okay? All right? Now, go to Exodus 22. Exodus 22. How, how many of you, you know, we love your neighbor as yourself, right? <laughs> what does that really mean? Because, you know, there is a legitimate thing to say about that when you, you know, you bring up uh, love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, there is a legitimate thing when you say, you know what, dude, <laughs> you don't want me to love you like I love myself sometimes. Okay, you genuinely do not want that. Okay, I'm my own worst critic. Okay, I am my own worst enemy most of the times, and so are you. Meaning you are your own worst enemy most of the times. I mean, I mean, we got enemies, you know. <laughs> we do. But most of the time, we are our worst enemies. So there is a legitimacy to when, you know, uh, love your neighbor as yourself. It's like, you know, you don't really want me to love you the way I love myself sometimes, okay? All right? Because true love is truth. It's a demonstration of truth. It's, it's much more than just an emotional thing which Christianity uh, presents you to. And I know I mentioned about the video on love. Uh, the green light has not happened yet. Remember, I'm not in charge of this stuff. Okay? But anyway. Exodus 22. Exodus 22, verses 7 on to verse 15. If a man deliver unto his neighbor. Now this is uh, co uh, acting, co-acting with... Uh, cohabitating, um, uh, how to deal with and be with, you know, interaction. Okay, this is what this is talking about. If a man shall deliver unto his neighbor money or stuff to keep, and it be stolen out of the man's house, if the thief be found, let him pay double. Okay? Men do not despise a thief if he steal bread to satisfy his soul. But if he be found, you know, he shall pay the double. It's like... I, okay, I understand. You're, you're, you're starving. Okay, I get that. And especially here in America, Illinois specifically, any of you in Illinois, you know what I'm talking about. Prices are outrageous for food. So it's like, okay, I don't, I don't blame a guy for stealing, but you know, you did break the law, so you're going to have to pay for it. More ways than one. Okay? If the thief be not found, then the master of the house shall be brought unto the judges to see whether he hath put his hand on to his neighbor's goods. Okay? All right. Are you the thief or was someone else there? For all manner of trespass, whether it be ox or ass, for sheep or for sheep for raiment, or for any manner of lost thing which another challengeth to be his, the cause of both parties shall come before the judges, and whom the judges shall condemn, he shall pay double unto his neighbor. Okay? 
there ought to be a honor that coexists amongst neighbors. But that ain't always the case, okay? You know, uh, our neighbors above <laughs> at the wee hours of the night still have wrestling matches, okay? Uh, our, our neighbor over there talks about the neighbor that lives above her and her son that, you know, like three in the morning, it's like a, a Iron Man or Bigfoot, boom, boom, that kind of stuff. No respect, okay? That kind of stuff. If a man deliver unto his neighbor an ass or an ox or a sheep or any beast to keep, and it die or be hurt or are driven away, no man seen it. Then shall an oath of the Lord be between them both, that he hath not put his hand unto his neighbor's goods. And the owner of it shall accept thereof, and he shall not make it good. Okay? An oath. Okay, an oath. A promise, you could say. I know there's a difference between an oath and a promise. But that's like, you know, that's why the Lord says, swear not at all. Because the Lord is the one who's going to hold you to your, you know, swearing or oath or whatnot. You know? Or make a vow or anything like that. We've talked about that before. God takes those things very seriously, even though most of you don't. That's why it's better not to vow or to utter anything out of your mouth because God's in heaven and you're on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. Okay? Uh, we've talked about this before. How many of you know some of these lost people's like, I swear to God, dude, I swear to God, dude. And yet they turn around and they, they you know... It's like, don't do that. Don't do that. I used to know a guy who, who unfortunately died and went to hell. Okay? Um, he was like that. He's like, I swear to God, dude. And he was lying through his teeth. But he would be like, I swear to God. I swear to God. It's like, just, just shut up. Don't do that. God, even if you people don't, God takes oaths seriously. Let that be a little bit of trembling. Let that be a little fear of the Lord in some of you. Okay? Careful. Careful. Okay? And if it be stolen from him, he shall make restitution unto the owner thereof. If it be torn in pieces, then let him bring it for witness. And he shall not make good that which was torn. Okay? So look at verse 12. If it be stolen from him, he shall make restitution unto the owner thereof. Because you entrusted it unto your neighbor, therefore the neighbor, if, he get, if it gets stolen or whatnot, it's like, oh, you put it under my care and I lost it, it got stolen. Even though I wasn't responsible for it, you know. Like I say, if it be stolen from him, he shall make restitution unto the owner thereof. It's like, I'm sorry. Pay it back. Okay? All right. Verse 14. <laughs> and here's something that a lot of people ought to, you know, borrowing. Okay? Borrowing. <laughs> the borrower is servant to the lender. Okay? But, and if any man borrow aught of his neighbor, and it be hurt or die, the owner thereof be not with it, he shall utterly make it good. But if the owner thereof be not with it, he shall not make it good. If it be an hired thing, it came for his hire. Now this is basic conduct of interaction between neighbor. Okay? But, you know, in Psalm 37, Psalm 37, <laughs> Psalm 37, just one verse, verse 21. Come on. Psalm 37, just one verse. Verse 21. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous sheweth mercy and giveth. Mm. How many of you have borrowed something and never got it back. <laughs> you know? 
It's like I, I, I don't I don't ask to borrow anything. You know, I, I don't. I don't. Can I borrow? Uh, no, I don't. You know, if I'm going to ask for something, I'm going to ask for something outright. Okay, don't borrow it to me. Okay? All right? But I, again, um, the one guy I, was, I just mentioned who died and went to hell, he's like, can I borrow? And then I, you know, help him out or something. I never see him again. Or never see it again. Okay? All right? <laughs> All right? There's a difference between giving out of a pure heart than borrowing with the accept with the expectation of getting back and you don't. Okay? <laughs> That's why it's better to give, okay? Just saying. But see, the wicked borroweth and payeth not again. Kind of thievery, but also likened onto a thing of entitlement, which Proverbs 30, Proverbs 30, okay, Proverbs 30, verses 11 on to verse 17. Proverbs 30, 11 on to verse 17. There's a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. Hmm. Someone who borrows and doesn't pay again, thief, robber, but hey, hey, I'm entitled to this. Hmm, sense of entitlement. Which you encounter most, not all, most youth today, youth, anywhere from a teenager to mid to late 20s, okay? Because <laughs> I you remember, let's be honest with each other, when you were 20-something, uh, you knew everything and you weren't ashamed to tell everybody that you knew everything, right? Right? Fledgling of pride, right? Right. Okay? There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes, and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. Got that nose up in the air as if they thump. Okay? There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. It's all about them. Wicked borroweth and payeth not again. Hmm. The horse leech hath two daughters, crying, give, give. There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say not it is enough. The grave, and the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that saith not it is enough. The eye that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey his mother. The ravens of the valley shall pick it out, and the young eagles shall eat it. Two unclean birds. See, when it comes to interaction with neighbors, what is the underlying thing that we need to remember? And this is from the Sermon on the Mount. But, but see, within the Pauline epistles, this is a dispensational thing that crosses lines. Okay? This truly is. Okay? This truly is. Matthew 7, verse 12. Just one verse. This is what is known as the golden rule. Now, the golden rule today is he who has the gold makes the rules. Roman Catholicism, they have all the gold, okay? But the reality scripturally is Matthew 7, verse 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Okay? I don't want my neighbors having a wrestling match at uh, 10 o'clock at night. Okay? Thankfully, they, they don't anymore. The kids that were up there have gone, gone away or grew up or something. I don't know. But, you know, that's the premise. Okay? If our neighbor comes over, it's like, hey, you know, like the other day, we went over, it's like, hey, Need an onion. Can you give us an onion? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Okay. But see, 
You do unto others. Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do unto you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Our neighbor thought enough to come over us, over to us, and spend time here. You know, and we, you know, we did. I, like, I, like I told my wife, it's like she obviously needed to talk. She, she did for quite a few hours over here. You know, around the time usually when you know I, I would do uh, the Lord. Excuse me, the Lord would have me to do a video. You know. So we were in the living room, and you know, a great time of witnessing and giving testimony of the Lord, you know. And see, it was a moment where we were just, both of us, both of us, were just there, allowing that person, the, our neighbor, to, to speak, to be heard. Sometimes we need to be neighbors, brethren. Now, I understand. We're, we're, you know, our spirit and soul are housed in this sagging sin suit. Okay, yes, it is. And sometimes we just don't want to hear someone else's problems, right? I know that. But sometimes, brethren, and see, th this is an, another aspect, another aspect of being in the ministry of reconciliation. And it being in this uh, part of the body of Christ, being called to this calling as the Lord has called me and calling other people to. Okay? <laughs> I, I, that's just my opinion, okay? But uh, this is also part of it, you know? It's like, it's like when, you talk, when you talk to the homeless and witness onto the homeless. Sometimes you just gotta shut up and let them talk. Dude, some of the greatest moments of witnessing onto the homeless is just being there, shutting up, and letting them talk. You know, th th again, that ministry of presence. I know ministry of presence isn't in the scripture like that. I get that. But just like being there for someone like that. Sometimes... Brethren, we are to do that. But you know what happens? We are in the last days. The, the redemption of the purchased possession draweth nigh. Absolutely. It could happen at any moment. And you can't trust people nowadays. You can't. You can't. Anyone who has a belief is a Christian, according to some people. Okay? Okay? Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. You can't trust people today. You can't. You can't. And some of these Christians, okay, and they have a, that's, they're legitimate in that. But see, you take it too far. And you don't leave yourself open to be used to the Lord for someone who you at first like, I don't want to talk to these people. You know, I don't want anything to do with that. You got to remember from whence we came, brethren. How many of you are approachable? Hmm? How many of you are approachable? And you, and you know what the scary thing is. Uh, some of our, a lot of our enemies, you know, these Jesuit coadjutor devils, they're approachable. But in the wrong context. What do I mean? They'll, you can approach one of these devils and they'll encourage you in a way that is not good. You approach a saint, they're going to guide you onto the Lord. You're going, the Lord may use you. In, in your testimony, and your behavior, and obviously your word, but I mean, an opportunity to demonstrate the Lord and His mercy, His grace. Okay? There's a difference. See, the one gendereth unto self. The other, the saint, gendereth unto the Lord. And see, they blur that line by speaking smooth words. See, the words of the Lord are first meant to be contrary before they are glorious. 
before they are glory, excuse me. But see, sometimes, brethren, we are to be that way. We are to be neighbors. And I remember listening to certain King James bowing Christians is like, you know, well, I just won't do that. You know, you can't. And they're right. You're right. You can't trust people nowadays. Okay, just because someone says I'm a saint, it's like, oh boy, oh good, good for you. Good. You, you, you can't trust people nowadays. And this is where you have to really be on your guard against these despicable checklist Christians. Okay, and I say that, uh, I say that because I, there was a time when you could say that I was one of those okay checklist people and it's always convenient that these people that come up with the checklists can conveniently fulfill their own checklists and that's something usually loosely based off of scripture okay but remember remember like the magicians of Egypt they could pull off some of these things that saints actually exhibit but there is always only so far they can go never forget that never forget that Be, beware the checklist and see like i said like i said that's where these devils come in you can't trust people nowadays you can't that's just the fact of the matter scripture second timothy chapter three tells you that you can't trust people So what happens? You harden yourself. You harden yourself. And I know, and I know, <laughs> believe me, dude, I know. I know. I, even my brethren have gotten, it's like, Fred, why did, you know, you, you shouldn't have been doing that, or you shouldn't have, I know, I know. That's a risk that you have to take. Now, you know, you don't have to. Remember, the Lord isn't holding a gun at your head, but you know what happens if you don't try, if you don't put yourself out there, you know, if you don't leave yourself open to be used of the Lord in a capacity like that, you know what happens? Nothing. Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19. Okay. Like I said, you, you can't trust people nowadays. You can't. You can't. You can't. And you know, when you got people, it's like, well, you know, Brad, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to go out of my way. And you know what? Fine. Fine. You know, before we read in Leviticus 19, okay, uh, remember what Mordecai said unto Esther about something like that, okay? Esther. Oh, uh, let me see. Uh, where, uh, where do we want? We want Esther chapter 4. One second. Okay, sorry about that. In Esther chapter 4, verses 13 on to verse 14. Then Mordecai commanded to Esther, uh, to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at, a, at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. Meaning, hey, if you're not going to do this, someone else will. But also keep in mind, dear brethren, but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. Here, here's, here's the thing. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Remember, the Lord doesn't force you to do anything. He doesn't. 
despite what the Calvinists want you to believe. Okay, the Lord doesn't force you to do anything. But what if? What if? What if it's like, hey, I, I, I don't trust anybody. I, I'm not, I, I'm not going to go out of my way. I'm not going to do any of this just because you can't trust anybody. What if the Lord orchestrated something for you, dear saint? That he brought that situation to pass because he wanted to use you. Who knoweth if you've been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this? Hmm? Do, do you guys think about that kind of stuff? Huh? How many of you guys out there, you're out doing whatever at Wally World or gas station or whatever, and you hear something? Or, or something happens and you give a thought you get that burn up here boy okay it's interesting too because we're going to be talking about something about that but you get that burn up here you saying so I'm talking about but you pass it away you go off your woman is like no 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 Whatever, what, and whatever it is, you might not be, you know, you might be intimidated or whatever, you know. Always, oh, but always, I don't care what you're doing. Always have a sword on you. Always. I don't care, dude, I don't care. If you're walking down your long driveway to get your mail, have a sword on you. Have a sword on you. I don't care if you're just going to get your coffee and your slippers. I don't care. Be ready. You never know. Well, Brad, you know, I, I, I carry a sword on me, but not. you never know. The one day, the one day, all right, okay, the one day you're like, I'm not taking my sword with me. <laughs> what happens? Now, the Lord can do anything, amen, amen. But that one day... That one day. Hmm? Leviticus 19, verses 15 on to verse 18. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. Righteousness. And, and I, I came across this uh, older gentleman who had a bigger double chin than I, um, who, <laughs> whose video, he's like, you can't judge me, you're not God. I'm like, oh boy, whenever I hear any of these Christians say that, it's like, oh, give me a break. It was a short video, right? And what, like I said, whenever I see anyone, it's like, you can't judge me, you're not God, that sets me off. And it's like, dude, shut up. I left a comment on this elderly gentleman's um, uh, little short video, and I told him, it's like, dude, you do greatly err. And I left the, uh, the link for the Judge Not video, okay? And within moments, my comment was taken down, and I was blocked. <laughs> within moments. Moments. I mean, with me sitting there, okay, I, I put the thing in there, the uh, the link for the video, and I, I, I think I had misspelled something, but I went to go and edit, edit it because it's like, I, I did, I think I misspelled something, or something like that, and I go to check, and I refresh, and the comments gone, it's like, okay, so I go, and I put it again, and it wouldn't let me do it, I was blocked, just like that, just like that, by some old guy with a... Uh, a cap on that had a hot dog on it. Uh, and he's like, you can't judge me. You're not God. And it's like, dude, dude, shut up. And then, you know, but point is, again, we are to judge people. We, we, we have, see, here, here's the thing, Christian. Okay? Chris Chin. Okay? That irritated me. I mean, you can block me, do whatever, but it's like, dude, I, you know, this thing about it, don't judge me, don't, just taste my buttocks. We have a perfect standard. Yes, we judge ourselves first. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. We examine ourselves daily. We search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. But we, we judge ourselves. Hence, we judge ourselves by a perfect standard. Hence, we can judge you by the same standard we judge ourselves. See, because I'm not the one that's perfect. The scripture is perfect. Hence, I have every right to judge you by a standard that I judge myself. That's how that works. And see, Christianity, don't judge me. You can't judge me. And they go to, what is it, uh, 2 Corinthians 4 or 1 Corinthians 4? Take that out of context like that sky out idiot, you know, who was, uh, that, uh, I said his channel name. The cross-dressing Calvinist of devil scoundrel, you know, twist that. You can't judge me. You're not God. And it goes to that in Corinthians and twists that, okay? Anyway, we are to judge people. We judge ourselves. But we are to judge. How, how are you to know what is good and what is evil unless you have God's perfect standard? See, if you don't judge, then the devil can get away with anything. Watch out for these. Watch out for these twits, man. Watch out for the... Uh, again, anybody who says, don't judge me, is always looking to cover up or justify a sin without exception. Okay? So, let's continue. Verse 16. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Ba, 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 ba. Lying, talebearer, gossip, whatever. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Who's my brother? My brother. Someone who went the way of the cross. A saint. My brother. There are brethren people out there who I think are my brother. I don't like. <laughs> not in the little, you know, thing. Our little fellowship that we have of our brethren, I, I mean the brethren, I love them, but there are brethren out there who I think are brethren I can't stand and they can't stand me, and hey, that's fine when we're up in heaven brother, that's fine that's fine, I have brethren who I love dearly who unfortunately we can't always get along, that, that's fine that, that happens, why? because of this, okay that's why that happens it's like, okay, you're, you're my brother. If you come to me, I, I, I mean, I'll be there for you in the capacity I can. Well, we can't always get along, but it's like, you're my brother. I'm going to love you. That's, you know, that's what you do. Okay? That's what that's talking about. Okay? You're not saved. You're not my brother. Okay? Now, that doesn't mean... That we aren't to be courteous. That doesn't mean that we, you know, that's a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? All right? That doesn't mean that we be jerks. <laughs> okay? That doesn't mean that. But, you know, my brother, even if I don't like you, even if you don't like me, if you were to come to me, you're my brother. Why don't you guys get along? Because of this, all the time. Flesh, something like that, okay? And, you know, if you get down to it, it's like, let's settle our disagreement here. This is the dividing line, okay? This is why the, the little group of, you know, people that uh, we, we have fellowship with and email and text and call every once in a while and that kind of stuff, you know, the brethren that we have like that, that's the that's the standard. It's like okay, you and I let's 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 go here, okay. <clears throat> thou shalt thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Distinction there, and not suffer sin upon him. Now there is a difference between a brother and a neighbor. They ain't the same thing. My brother could be my neighbor. I wish that were. 
we were living with you up there in the northeast, that big old place, brother, you know, we'd all be fat. <laughs> My, my wife would be cooking us up, so uh, you know we 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 you'd have to roll us out, dude. <laughs> you know, uh, but you know that I mean, yes, my brother could be my neighbor, could be. But see, there, there, you look at that verse, dude. There's there's, okay. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. And not suffer sin upon him. Now, remember, contextually, this is written unto who? The Hebraic Jewish people under the law. So contextually, you could say, well, brother Israel, that is correct. But see, our instruction in righteousness is what we're getting at. Okay? Yes! Leviticus, pertaining to Levi, the book of Leviticus. Under the law. Who are their neighbors? Okay, contextually, Israel, okay, yes, 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 our instruction in righteousness, they're not my brother who is my neighbor, not my brother who is my neighbor, okay, all right, got to remember that, got to remember that, verse 18, thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, I am the Lord. And you got to remember, what we're looking at is for our instruction in righteousness. Okay? This is the law. This is under the law, which was faith and works. Eternal security was not there. It was not by grace through faith. Okay? Eternal security was not there. Okay? All right? Under the law, you were keeping your own soul by keeping the law. Okay? Because the law is not a faith. All right? The faith under the law was that your faith was in God, that he would honor you for doing what he prescribed in the law. Okay? That's how that works. All right? But now go to Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. Okay? Love thy neighbor as thyself. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Because like I said, <laughs> some of y'all don't want me to love you the way I love myself. Okay? That's a legitimate thing. Okay? <laughs> you don't. <laughs> Trust me. Okay? But uh, Mark chapter 12, verses 28 on to verse 34. One of the scribes came. Now remember, before the death, burial, and resurrection... The law was still binding. Okay? Before the death, burial, and res resurrection. Okay? There was no eternal securities yet. Why? Because the death, burial, and resurrection and the bloodshed on the cross hadn't happened yet. Okay? Don't forget that. And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which, uh, which is the first commandment of all? And look at how Jesus, Jesus, God the Father, he knew what the first commandment was. But look how he answers. And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Yes, and thou shalt love thy Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Now hold your place here and go back to Exodus chapter 20. Compare scripture with scripture. Okay? Exodus chapter 20. Uh, let's read on to verse 4. No, 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 no. On to verse 6. And, uh, and God spake all, spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. <laughs> including yourself. Thou shalt not, and here's the one that they, uh, the Catholics take out. 
Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto the thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Now see, the first commandment was what? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So when our Lord, go back to Mark, says this, and Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. See, the Lord is telling you what is behind the commandments, meaning that it was a love for the Lord, which is why they kept the law, ought to have kept the law. Because you got to remember, under the law, it was faith and works, no eternal security was there. The Lord was not a permanent resident in anybody. Okay? You got to remember that. You got to remember that. So what was the driving thing, ought to have been the driving thing behind the person following the law? Right here. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, is like namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Now look at how the dude answers. And the scribe said unto him, Master, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth. For there is one God, and there is none other but he. Okay? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay? Including yourself. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the soul and with all the strength and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Amen. That was the reason why. Ought to have been the reason why. But as we have the testimony, that wasn't always the case especially with the Pharisees, because they did all their things to be seen of men. It was an outward shoe. It's like you get some of these Christians who do nice things for people, but the, on the inside, man, they're doing it so they can both. Well, I do this. I do that. See? God knows your heart. Yes, he sure does. Usually. When these Christians do these nice things. It's like, it's like when these guys give money to these Christian whatever. And then they write them off on their taxes. Yeah. Verily. You have your reward. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly. He said unto him. Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. This is not a reference Onto the physical, literal kingdom of heaven. This is a reference unto the spiritual kingdom. The kingdom of God. Okay? Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after that durst ask him any questions. And you're not far from the kingdom of God. Okay? Now go to Romans 13. Here's the dispensational cross. Crossover, I should say. Romans 13. <laughs> Romans 13. We want verses 8 on the first to the close of the chapter. Owe no man anything. To borrow a servant to the lender. Don't get in debt. Okay? Don't get in debt. Yes, we pay rent. Absorbing <laughs> Some. But, you know, like getting a car, stuff like that. Get a loan so you can afford some, get something that you can't afford regularly. Okay? Owe no man anything but to love one another. 
For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. And see, the love that Christianity comes around is like, pacify them in their sins. Don't scare them. I don't care who you are. You come to me, my house, my wife, us, we're going to tell you the truth. We're going to exhibit truth. And if you ask, you're going to hear it. Even if you don't ask most of the time. But, <laughs> but you know, you, you come out, it's like, well, what's the truth? It's like, hey. I, and I've encompassed this uh, more so recently. You know, of course. It's like, you really want to hear it? I'll, I'll tell you. Lord, the Lord will show you through here. Here, you want to know? Remember to always put that into your witnessing. Because a lot of the times in my experience, someone will ask and you start telling them the truth. They don't want to hear it. But anyway, verse 9. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Hey, you got an NIV or a New American Standard or the LSD version of MacArthur that's being pushed by Jesuit James White? This isn't in there. Thou shalt not bear false witness. That's not in your NIV, is it? Thou shalt not covet, because God abhorreth the covetous. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying. Namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Hmm. Love is truth. No ill to his neighbor. I don't want my neighbor keeping me up at 10 o'clock at night with a wrestling match. I don't want my neighbor keeping me up at night listening to their thumpity, 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 bum, da bum, dum, bum music. That just drives me crazy. Okay? I wouldn't do that to them. You see? Okay? They wouldn't tell me the truth. But I will. Okay? All right? And that knowing the time, that now is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we believe. Nearer today than it was yesterday. Okay? They, uh, they live, they sleep. They live, they sleep. That's another video on the backup channel. Okay? The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. See, choice. Choice. You've got to make the right choices, brethren. Okay? And of course, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 out of verse 12. See, what we just read about putting on the Lord Jesus Christ, now, you know, now is our salvation nearer than it was before. Okay? We are to live as examples and samples unto the lost. You know Romans 12, 1 and 2? You ought to know that by heart. Okay? We are called to be ambassadors for Christ. We have been given the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. Okay? So, my neighbor, okay, we're going to love them as ourselves. Meaning, we're going to give them the respect due to us, uh, to a Pers uh, to a person, a spirit, soul, and body. Not make too much noise. I mean, we're doing videos, but see, there is a time allotment here in the, the apartment complex where no noise can be made like that. Okay? <laughs> okay? But, you know, I'm not going to do anything ill to my neighbor. Okay? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Like I said, I don't want my neighbor uh, playing the thumpity thumpity music at 10 o'clock at night when my wife's in bed and I'm trying to go to bed myself. Okay? All right? 
I mean, see, that is a basic thing, basic, that crosses dispensational lines that is lost today, isn't it? Isn't it? You know? And, and you try to go to some, uh, somebody respectfully. It's like, hey, can you... I've heard about this with some of the people in the complex down there. It's like they've gone courteously. Courteously. It's like, hey, could you turn that down? And the lady's like, ah! Yeah. <coughs> but interestingly enough, they want courtesy from you. But they ain't willing to give it themselves. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? We want that courtesy. But are you going to give that courtesy? You see, this is one of the uh, one of the many drawbacks to this thing called the King James Bible believing movement. A lot of these guys have that, you know, and they're right. You can't trust people nowadays. You can't. But that, why does that come with them with a hardness to maybe miss out on something that the Lord may have instituted there, but they're not going to because of a hardness. And like I said, it's a legitimate reason. You can't trust people. I'm not just going to let anybody into this apartment government. You know what? I'll go out there and talk with them. I'll sit with them. I'll listen to them. If the Lord's like, Get out of there. I'm going, to, I'm going to obey the Lord. See, the Lord's the one that orchestrates these things. How many of you have passed up an opportunity that the Lord had orchestrated? And you know it, brother. You know it, brother. Because the minute you walk away from something that the Lord has orchestrated, you being a saint, you feel it. It's like, oh, no. You know what I'm talking about. You sisters, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Why? You have excuses. It's not easy to witness to people. I know that. Believe me, I know. But see, you don't fret men. And you go as the Lord would guide you. As he would guide you. Remember, he's, he's the one who's in control. Not you. He ain't forcing you, but you gotta, you gotta make the right choices. Okay? Let's continue. All right? For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. Brother, fellow saint, for God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness, being other. But yet Christianity, especially with these wicked, uh, sleazy believists, you know, go ahead and get your hands dirty, be as the world to win the world. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit, and the Lord is that Spirit. But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. For ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And how is that? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. See, this is where you find out what real love is. The false love is the one that is given of Christianity. And indeed, uh, but as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we, but we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. Verse 11. And that ye study to be quiet, and do your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. Now some will say, well see, that means keep your religion to yourself. Don't be a witness. Uh-uh, uh that's not what that's talking about. Prove it to you. Absolutely. Keep reading. 
that we may walk honestly, honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. Being a test, it's Romans 12, 1 and 2. Be not uh, conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and perfect will of God. Who are you proving that unto? Your neighbors. The lost. Okay? This does not, and I've encountered that. That come to this, like, see, you're not supposed to be out there witnessing. Um, uh, no, no, that's not what that says. Okay? We are to mind our own business, meaning loving our neighbors as ourselves, do unto others as we would have them do unto us, and by adhering ourselves to the scriptures, we exhibit that holy behavior, godly behavior, other behavior than that, as we do not run to the same excess of riot. Whereas the neighbor would be the, the thumpity thumpity at 10 o'clock at night, not going to hear from us. Okay? Okay? Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4. Just two verses. Colossians chapter 4. Verses 5 and 6. Walk in wisdom, the fear of the Lord, toward them that are without. Lost people, not saved. You know, most Christians. Redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace. Seasoned with salt. Salt burns. You ever get salt in a wound? But salt is a preservative. Uh, where is that? Um, by where Sodom and Gomorrah are? Uh, the salt structures that are out there. You can you can look that up online yourself. Okay, that had some of them crazy nitwit Pentecostal charismatic devils. It's like, well, that's Lot's wife. You can't prove that. You can't prove that. There are salt structures out there apparently that look like the form of a person, spirit's own body. You know, of a body there, but you can't prove. Well, that's Lot's. Well, you can't prove that. But you know that she became a pillar of salt. You know that. Okay? All right? But anyway, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Now, see, some Christians like, well, see, we got to answer every, ought to answer every man. Sometimes you answer someone by shutting up. Sometimes you answer people in the way you behave or what you do or don't do. The guy at the old Aldi slapped the, uh, the tracks out of my hand. You know, he was expecting me, and he <laughs> was there for a moment, but he was expecting me to get up in his face. And it's like, hey, hey dude. <laughs> okay? See? See, and, that, and that's one of the things, brethren. And I've blown that before, okay? I, I don't fret men. I'm, I don't fret men. And if I'm physically threatened, there are some times that I will, you know, it's like, what are you doing? And I've, I've blown that before. I have. I have. I admit it. I admit my faults, brethren. Okay, I have. I've been in situations where I've kind of gotten aggressive when I shouldn't have. When I shouldn't have backed off. Or, I mean, where I should have backed off, but I didn't. Okay, I've been in situations like that. Okay, I have. It's, you know? The Lord's chastisement was brutal about that. Okay? But the point is that your speech speech be always always with grace, seasoned with salt. Salt burns and preserves. The word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures, to a lost man hearing it, it's going to burn them at first. It's supposed to. The Romans wrote. Okay? This, the scripture, first becomes a burn to you before it can be a, pre a preservative to you. Okay? But see, the devils 
take the burn out and say God loves you. One of the most despicable doctrines in the history of mankind. God loves you unconditionally. No, he doesn't. Okay? No, God does not, present tense, love the Christ-rejecting sinner. <laughs> okay? That's nonsense. Okay? But that's what Christianity does. They take away the burn I just try to give you the preservative. But see, without the burn first, what good is the preservative? Make them twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. That's what happens. Okay? And that's why so many people don't want to hear. That's why, as the saying, when you're witnessing and the Lord, you know, you're shoulder to shoulder, it's like, do, 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 do you want to hear this? No, 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 no. Do you want to hear the truth? Because we're gonna, I'm gonna show you, and you're not gonna like it. You really want to hear it? Do you really want to hear it? And Romans 15, 1 through 3. Romans 15, 1 through 3. Not first Corinthians. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. Not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. Bear one another's burdens. Okay? But also, we have to remember this one thing. Galatians 6. Galatians 6. And this, this is a problem with any saint who the Lord uses in any capacity and the saint is made aware of it. What am I talking about? You're in full-time ministry. And oh, you feel like Paul. By all the people you've led to the Lord. And all the people that get a hold of you. and Oh, you're... Galatians 6, 1 on the verse 3. Brethren, if any man be overtaken in fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself also... Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. And as our beloved brother Alexander Hartley brought out in that wonderful video, uh, I, excuse me, beautiful video, not wonderful, <laughs> but that which will be in the description box. Uh, you know, who are you? Touch, he touches the Lord through him. Touches on this uh, aspect. Okay. God, consider yourself in two ways. That, number one, you don't be led along into this very sin that, to the person you're talking to, but also, and I believe more so, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Tempted to what? Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth. Verse 4, but let every man prove his own work. Then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. What does that mean? Why were you doing that? Hey, Mr. King James Bible believing preacher, why are you doing it? Hmm? To put a notch in your belt? Hmm? Hmm? To make you look good? Hmm? Hmm? See, that's something that we in this position have to be on guard against. Okay, the Lord uses you. Okay, you have the, the privilege to be part of what the Lord is doing. You got to consider yourself so you don't sit yourself up on high on your high horse and let other people come around and pat you on your back and then you get all full of yourself and then start saying, I, 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 me, me, me. Okay? That's what that's more talking about. Yes, it encompasses, you know, hey, you know, you don't become, a, when in Rome, you don't do like the Romans, God forbid. But I believe it's more encompassing, you watch your own self, man. 
beware, lest you get puffed up. Because I mean, I've, I mean, yeah. I mean, when you are made aware that someone came to the Lord because of something that the Lord did through you, it's like, wow. But see, when that starts to happen, what could happen? You could start thinking, well, well, you know, my ministry here, you know, look at me. Look at me. And you know that's present in someone. Paul, again, Paul brought that up under great duress. He didn't right away throw out his credentials at the first scratch. I've been doing this for years and years. I feel like Paul. All the people I've led to the Lord. See, when someone does that in the first incident, even the second, third, fourth, fifth, Okay, Paul did that under, yes he did, they're right. And it's interesting that they go to that to justify themselves. Paul did it, it's like, I'm speaking like a fool. <laughs> it's like, I'm speaking foolishly. But most of these guys, when they come to defending themselves, see, they're defending themselves rather than defending the Lord. Okay, they're boasting themselves through the Lord, rather the Lord through themselves at them. And that's something that, you know, being 16 years in the faith that was once delivered on to the saints, the way, okay? Amen, brother? Um, that's something personally that I'm aware of, and I'm, I'm, you know. <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, hey, Lord, you know, I get like where these, some of these guys, you know, uh, get, get, take that and boom, knock me, right? Knock me on my buttocks, you know? You know? I have a brother, I have a sister, I have my wife even. It's like a pride. Right. And you know what? I have a pride problem. I have a pride problem. I do. You know? We got to watch out for that. It's like, well, why are you doing it? Hmm? Why, why are some of you doing that? I mean, there are brethren who I know personally who do it because they're saints. Number one, and their hearts right with the Lord. Are providing for the necessities of the saints. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. And those brethren and those sisters will reap a hundredfold. Amen. Amen. But others do it. For the facade, for the display, for the religiosity. Okay? Galatians chapter 5 while we're here. Look across the page. Verses 13 and on 15. For brethren, ye have been called on to liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. And oh, how many Christians are doing contrary to this, using their liberty as what? An occasion to serve the flesh. These, they're not saved, the uh, sleazy believists, well, I just believe and receive, so I can do anything. I can just go to church and the Jesuit priest, uh, you know, have give you a cookie and hail mail, Mary full of grapes, and go out and you Christians go to your phallus house church building on Sunday, okay, and you put on a vain shoe and you dress up and you have your little dose of religiosity, and then you go out and live like a devil. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Oh boy. Oh boy. Let's read verse 16. This I say then. Walk in the capital S spirit the Lord, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. Capital S spirit, the Lord himself. Flesh! Which the adversaries are all about. And these are contrary, the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. That's, that's why 
I personally, well, you know, a lot of us saints, we don't get along with Christians. Have you ever noticed that, saint? Why? Because the one is all about the flesh. Look at their comment sections. When the saints are all about the Lord Jesus Christ, Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4, verses 17 out of 25. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance in them because of the blindness of their hearts. And where is that in Corinthians? Um, of Corinth, 2 Corinthians 4, verses 1 and verse 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, so it's 1 Corinthians chapter 4 that these devils like to take out of context. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully, Oh, it's by grace through faith from the Garden of Eden to the end of Revelation. Okay? Just believe and receive. Okay? Sermon on the Mount is doctrine for us today. Ugh. Okay? It isn't. Okay? You've got to rightly divide the word of truth. Handling the word of God deceitfully. When you ain't rightly dividing the word of truth there, Christian, you're handling the word of God deceitfully. And how many of you do got the word of God? But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Handling the word of God deceitfully. Trying to justify paganism. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Walk your talk. But if our gospel be hid... It is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, that's Satan, Lucifer, okay, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. Verse 5, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Hey, you remember you're a servant of the Lord and you're supposed to serve others. They're not here to serve you. Oh boy. Oh boy, huh? Mr. Kent Helvin, he's not a saint. Mr. Robert Brake. I, I, I won't say any more names. I won't say any more names. Because I'm going to, I eventually would will that down to the one that some of you are already thinking about. It's not about me. It's about the Lord. And it's about serving you. We saints, okay, who are called to whatever part in the body of Christ, we are here to serve others, not to be served. I think some of you need to remember that. Okay, let's continue. Verse 19 in Ephesians chapter 4. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to, all, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. A Christ who has no... A Christ, which one? A Christ who has no requirements... Loves you unconditionally, isn't angry. It's not the Christ of Scripture. You have not learned Christ. You have learned any Christ. Which one? That spirit of Antichrist. Okay. If so, that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, 
as the truth is in Jesus. See, this is prophesying today. The Lord in me is speaking to you through his word. Okay? And I've run into Pentecostals who say, well, you're supposed to actually hear the audible voice of God. No. Could you? Sure. Sure. Yes, you could. But see, wouldn't that be a sign? And today we walk by faith, not by sight. Okay? Well, hearing by the word of God. But how come a lot of these people who claim that they hear from God, but usually nine times out of ten, are contrary to the scriptures and always are, don't rightly divide it. You answer me that one there, buddy boy. Okay? <clears throat> All right. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which intuits verbal and physical. See, the, 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 the devils can do the physical and the verbal to an extent, but there's only so far they can go, brethren. Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. And there it is. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's a daily thing. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another with his neighbor. Are you getting this? Are you getting this? Okay. Now, we're going to shift a little here, but s still in the same thing. Bowels of mercies. Bowels of mercies. How many of you have, there are, there are like, you know, the brethren that are in, that we have fellowship with, the, the little group that we have, that the brethren that we email and that we talk to. Uh, like I said, like, uh, uh, the, our brother from the Northeast. Uh, not not the one guy, but our, our brother from the Northeast. Um, uh, he he's he's an example of that. He 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 has this part. He has this down. Pat, I I, I learned something from you, brother. <laughs> okay, and other brethren do as well. Okay, but bowels of mercies. Now the word bowels. Now this is where you got to be. You look up the word bowels. Okay. Uh, like on King James Bible Online. They say that it appears 37 times. That's when you got to check your concord concordance, your strong concordance, because it appears 37 times in 37 verses, but sometimes the word appears more than once in a verse. So when you're using King James Bible Online, be aware it's giving you the number of verses, not necessarily every single occurrence. You got to remember that. That's why you need to check it with Strong's Concordance. And I think Bowles appears like something like close to uh, 40, 42, 41 times when uh, Strong's Concordance. And I looked up every single one of them. I looked up every single one of them. You have heard, I have heard, that when, like Bowles, well, Bowles means the whole thing. I mean, that's a. Dude, I did this. You look in Scripture. When the reference to bowels appears, okay, it's usually a reference from the paps down in that mid area, okay? The, you know, he who proceedeth from thy bowels, okay? His bowels gushed out, out of the floor. The very first reference in Scripture of bowels is talking about, okay? It's like, Brad, why are you talking about that? Well, you might have heard, well, bowels and intuits the entire person, spirit's own body. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. But in Philippians chapter 2, come on, Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 4. If there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship in the capitalist spirit, if any bowels of mercies, 
bowels of mercies. See, the mercy that we are to extend unto others isn't supposed to be a superficial thing. So when we see this thing of bowels, it goes, it's from deep down in the gut. Okay? It, it's reaching deep down within you. It does not encompass the entire person, spirit, soul, and body. No, it does not. Okay? There are many out there who give superficially, who do things on a superficial shoe to, to put on the facade. It's not coming from deep. Deep. Uh, there's a depth there that this is talking about that isn't there in these superficial fake little so-called Christians. Okay? But is there, in a majority, especially the ones that we personally know, okay, that pray with us, pray for us, help us, that's there in them. Why? Because they're saints. The brother from the, the brother from Northwest out there that I'm referring to, he's got that part down pat. Really does. Really does. Why? Because it goes deep within the gut. The gut. Deep within the bowels, boy. It's a deep thing. How many of you do something? Well, I guess it's my duty. I got to. Yet you blew it. You've missed it, Jack. If there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ, if any comfort in love, if any fellowship in the, of the capitalist spirit, the Lord himself, if any bowels of mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. How many people have you led to the Lord? I don't know. I don't know. I've been informed of a few, but I don't know. And you know what? I don't want to know. I, I just, when I'm up at the judgment seat, I'll find out. Okay? That's not the point. Okay? But see, with, 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 these, with these dudes, man, some of these uh, preachers, the King James Bible leading preachers, I, I feel like Paul. Uh, I, blah, blah, blah. Look at what I've done. Me, me, me. I... Strife and vain glory. All their works they do to be seen of men. Fairly, you have your reward. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. And this is the thing that the sleazy believers, because they're not saved, miss. Because, of, hey, hey, you know, repentance is a work. <laughs> right? You wicked idiot. You're not an idiot. <laughs> but you wicked devil, right? Prayer is a work. Repentance is a work. Pens go from unbelief to belief. Yeah. I believe there is one God that does. And I'll do as well. The devils also believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But see, what is missed by Christianity, by the false, is 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. From I am Jesus. It's what y'all missing. I'm not talking to saints. I'm talking to you Christians. You lost people. You're, you're, you're all right. I'm talking to you Christians. It's what you're missing. It's what you're missing. Especially when you get to a point where let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. How many of these hot shots would condescend to sit with a homeless person? Without, without the, without the, you know, your little uh, accoutrements so you can like, look at me, look at me, huh? Hush, hush. That's between you and the individual and the Lord. You know, don't share it. That's a, that's a moment. That's a special moment, you know? 
people have asked me. I, I, I've had emails like, well, Brad, how come you don't, you know, have, you know, your health phone and show us what you're doing? I, I've done a few where, you know, putting tracks on cars. I think I have at least. I think I have. But, you know, those are, those are personal moments. Those are personal moments. And this isn't about how I look. How you look at uh, reflects the Lord. You are right. Let's see. When you follow this, that will be present. But when you use this to justify yourself, and see, a saint, man, you you read the, you read this scripture. You can't justify yourself. The one who justifies you is the Lord. I'm a sinner who is chief. You know, when I would, would talk to a brother, a brother or a sister or whatever, you know, it's, it's like there. You know? <laughs> but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. I truly believe that my brother Alexander Hartley is far better than I. That brother from Ohio, brother Jeff Jones. These are people better than me. These are better men. Okay? Brother from overseas in Croatia, better than me. Better men. My brethren. My brother from Norway. Sister over in England and uh, here in Illinois. Okay? These are better. Why? Because I'm a sinner who is chief. And it's not a thing of boasting. That's the lowliness. But see, when you save yourself because you're something special, you just believe, you, you're not lowly. When you belong to Christ's church, you, you belong to something. When you're part of a denomination, you're, you're, you know, you're part of that. We're accepted in the beloved. And we are unprofitable servants. And we have done our duty. Verse 4. Verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of God. And you know what that means? That means that your little comfort zone. <laughs> that means that your little comfort zone has to be punctured sometimes. That means sometimes that you're going to be in a situation where your skin is going to crawl. But it's like, okay, Lord, I don't want to do this. But I, I really think this is... Okay, let's go. That's what it is, brother. That's what it is. And we, saints, the longer we go, we have to be on our guard against this. God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the lowly. And the lowly are humble. Therefore, it's not a uh, contradiction because some cute people, like it says, lowly, and then it says humble. Uh, you're lowly in the eyes of the Lord. You're humble. Colossians 3. Colossians 3, which, which started this whole thing. Verses 12 on to 17. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. Not this. See, you're Calvinist, right? I am elect. Pride. Where is your lowliness? Huh? You Pentecostal. I've seen the Lord. Yeah, your humility is fake, buddy. You have it hidden in your reservoir. Well, I've seen God. You have 
Oh, I'm elect. You're not. And you have that, oh, that fake little religiosity, that fake shoe. But deep down, you're elect. You, you, you saved it. You just believe and receive. You know? You're, you're part of Christ's church. You're, you're part of the King James Bible believing movement. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. What does that mean? God elected the way of the cross. Okay? You go the way he elected, brrr, you're part of the elect. Okay? It has nothing to do with the satanic Calvinism. Not a thing. Okay? Not a thing. Nothing. Holy and beloved, bowels of mercies comes from deep within. Deep. Not the superficial, well, I guess I have to. Uh, I guess I, 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 I'm a saint. I'm supposed to do it. Dude, you, you've blown it. You've blown it. Uh, you know what, brethren? <laughs> Come on. I've, had, I've been there, too. I've been there, too. I have. I'd be lying if I said I had in this position I got to do and the, and the Lord just kicks me in the stones every time praise the Lord because that's not what it is, is about the bowels of mercies it comes from deep within you not this little superficial thing where it comes from a root and that root is who Christ because we don't we don't know what to do as we ought to do right we make the choice to do what he says, according as he says. Okay? Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, make the right choice. Holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. Context, the body of Christ. If any man have a quarrel against any, if any man, any man, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Now stop. Context, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. Okay? You know, you, you're my brother. I might not like you. You might not like me, but I don't. I don't have one grudge against a, a brother or sister of the body of Christ. I don't. I don't. I might not like you. You might not like me. Okay, we might not be able to get along. But do I have a grudge against a brother? Do I hold something against a brother or a sister? But absolutely not. I, I I'd be in trouble with the Lord. Okay. That doesn't mean we're all going to get along, unfortunately. Why? You read the book of Acts between Paul and Barnabas. What got in the way? This flesh. Okay? I, I wish it weren't that way, but in the real world, you know, the real world, that's what happens. All right? All right, wait, wait, wait. If any man, you, you can't escape that. Why is that significant? Have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Now see, some will go to the Sermon on the Mount, okay, and uh, talk and go focus on, well, unless you forgive, you're not being, you're not going to be forgiven. That's, that's not for us today, okay? <laughs> that is not for us today. Um, Eric uh, Lionheart um, he, he's a proponent. Unless you forgive, you're not forgiven. That's work. Okay? Today, you do not have to forgive someone in order to be forgiven. Okay? That's work. Okay? You don't. But what will happen if you don't forgive someone, your testimony is going to be shot. You're going to have a hardened heart. Your fruit's going to stink. 
Okay? There are so many things that can go wrong, but see, it's not going to affect your salvation. Sermon on the Mount, okay? Unless you forgive someone, you won't be forgiven. When our Lord talks about that, it's in context to what? The kingdom of heaven. See, the kingdom of heaven is all works, people. Unless you forgive someone during the kingdom of heaven, you're not going to be forgiven. Why is that? Because you're going to be able to see the Lord on the throne. Hence, you don't need faith when you can see the guy. So, today, no, you don't have to forgive in order to be forgiven. No, you don't. But see, if you don't, we are to be ambassadors for Christ. We are to put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, deep down. If you don't forgive someone, it's not going to affect your salvation. Don't believe any of these idiots like Eric Lionheart, who tells you, well, unless you forgive, you ain't going to be. That's not true. It's not true today in this dispensation. See, rightly dividing the word of truth. It will be for the kingdom of heaven, which is all works. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. But today, no. But see, if you don't, see, we're supposed to put on those bowels of mercy that come deep. And how do you, you know, love your neighbor as yourself? Okay? All right? We are ambassadors for Christ. We are supposed to walk in wisdom, fear of the Lord, towards them that are without. And see, when you today are under this illusion, delusion, that unless you forgive, you're not going to be forgiven, you can boast yourself, can't you? That's something you're doing. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, you're not going to get away from that any man. Any man means <laughs> any man. Okay, I'll give you an example. Okay, hold your place here. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, let me see. Uh, there are several here, but we'll, we'll, we'll look at verses 16 and 17. And 1 Corinthians 3. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit, capital S of God, dwelleth in you? If any man, yourself, or someone else, any man, defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are? If any man. You see, if any man's work shall be burned, in verse 15. What's the context there, though? Okay, talking about at the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? Alright? Context! Dear people. Context. But see, when you look in Colossians chapter 3, context, okay, any man there in verse 13 means any man. We have a quarrel against anyone? Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Now see, our, our brother gave a really good uh, explanation of this. It's like, look, I forgive you, but I don't want anything to do with you, okay? Okay, yeah, I for okay, you did me wrong. You never apologized. You never came in repentance. I forgive you, but go away. <laughs> go away, okay? Considering thyself. Because if you hold on to a grudge, it's going to affect everything in your life. Let's continue. And above all these things, put on charity, which is self-sacrifice. And when you forgive someone who doesn't want to be forgiven by you, um, and wants the whole, and you say, look, I forgive you, but stay away. That's self-sacrifice. Which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. To the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Hi, huh, hey, you know, dude, you got a grudge in your heart. You're a saint and you're holding a grudge. Where's the peace?
Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, fear of the Lord, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you're holding a grudge. It's not going to affect your salvation. No, it's not. But you are an ambassador for Christ. How you serve the Lord reflects Him. You're a saint and you hold a grudge. Like I said, I have, I have no grudge against any saint. The enemies of our Lord and go straight to hell. You Jesuit coadjutors, you can go straight to hell. But um, the brethren, saints, well, Brad, isn't that a grudge? No. No. I don't hold a grudge. I don't have a grudge against anyone, actually. There are people out there who I hate with perfect hatred. Absolutely. Because we're supposed to. Okay? They're an enemy of our Father. They're my enemy. Okay? That's not a grudge. That's scripture. 1 John 3. Then we'll be done. First John 3. Okay. If you love the Lord, you're supposed to hate what's evil. I know, I know you, some of you saints have a problem with that. You can't sit at the table of the Lord. <laughs> I was thinking about you there, it's something I you can't sit, sit at the Lord's table. And the table of devils. Either you will love the one or despise the other. You cannot love God and mammon. 1 John 3, 16 on to verse 18. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him. Compassion. How dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Sometimes, brethren, just being there. You know, zipping it and listening. Sometimes we're called to be neighbors. <laughs> and I'll give you that. I'll give you that, you know. There are some people out there I don't want to be a neighbor to. And they, I, I give you that. But see, sometimes that's what we're called to do. Thank you, brethren. Thank you. Thank you for watching this. Uh, hopefully this is helpful. Uh, hopefully uh, we're going to be magnified and glorified. Uh, keep your brother, our brother Jeff Jones in your prayers. Um, it's getting worse. Um, the Lord is providing for our dear brother Jeff Jones. Uh, he is providing for him. Praise the Lord. But um, things are getting worse for him. Please keep him in your prayers. We'll talk more about that uh, in another video, Lord willing, tomorrow or coming up soon. Like I said, it's, uh, I'm not in charge here. So. Thank you, brethren. We love you. going to get this uploaded. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.